Dr. Rahul Magan here is the Chief Executive Officer of Tragedy Consulting LLP and today we would be covering a very dedicated topic which is Reference Rate Derivative Strategies. There are multiple companies which we have in this world which are subject to that and uh, unfortunately I met up that uh, one of that company I wanted to I don't want to name it in the public domain uh, a few days ago and I have explained the entire process to them and he was so convinced that he started to take us on the board for a consulting assignment and, and to create that strategy and then I decided to have this on the YouTube basically just to let you know how exactly it works of course this YouTube video would be covered the entire details how this happened what to do and so on and so forth but this would be covering a uh, uh, part of that you know from an accounting point of view there are three kind of exposures a company could have cash flow exposure fair value exposure and a net investment exposure cash flow exposure is an exposure which basically companies are taking to hedge their cash flows Fair value exposure is an exposure which the company is taking to hedge all those assets and liabilities which are subject to fair valuation. Example, external commercial borrowing, example, FCNR, example, AR, account receivable, example, AP, ex example, uh, third party AR, third party AP, transfer pricing AR and transfer price, intercompany AR and intercompany AP. Third is the net investment hedging. Basically, when a company the parent company or any of the group company will go and invest in another group company. The perfect example is Wipro India. When Wipro India invested a good sum of money in Wipro China, only because they don't want their group company uh, to basically go in the local markets and raise the money when the parent company is full of cash. And in my personal opinion, this is not wrong. The reason being, if you are flush with cash, and your parent company will go in this, uh, you know, the domestic market and want to take the money. This is absolutely not right. You should invest that. When the accounting standard does permit you to take a hedging position on that. This is known as net investment hedging. But today, when we when we're talking about the reference rate derivative strategies, this effectively be for fair value hedging. Let's take an example of a company which is very well known, which is a which is the perfect case for as far as the fair valuation is concerned. Let's take an example of a company to whom everybody know, a company being founded by Steve Jobs, which is Apple Inc. Apple, Google and Microsoft. Uh, Tesla, uh, Tesla is also joining that list. Amazon is also joining that list, but for a while. Let's, take an, let's stick to an example with Apple. Apple is a company which is practically everywhere in this world apart from the two countries where practically business could not happen, cannot happen. Apple is everywhere in this world. Apple India is there, Apple London, Apple Sweden, Apple Swiss, Apple Germany, Apple Russia, they are everywhere. But here we are taking an example of a cup of Apple comparing the two legal entities. In fact, not the two, we are comparing it three. So we are here take one, we compare Apple India and one we would be comparing here which is Apple Singapore Apple is, is a technological brand iPhone now I now for iPhone X and Mac Air and so many things which they are selling now Apple India is having Apple India is full of exports Basically, they are not imports. The reason being, are they producing in India? No. From where, from where they are selling it? They are basically selling on behalf of Apple US. They are not selling on behalf, they are, they are not producing in India. The production actually is happening in the Taiwan, right? So they are actually, actually, they are actually selling the product which is made by the Apple US and it's being sold in India by Apple India. Now, Apple India is more or less an importer while Apple Singapore is also an importer we assume that this is a we will let's assume this to be an exporter what we will do here we will create a non-deliverable strategy we understand that Indian rupee is a non-deliverable trade Indian rupee can be traded in a non-deliverable market 
and I am not sure how many people understand that Indian rupee uh, to trade Indian rupee in a non-deliverable market you need Indian rupee reference rate which is nothing but RBA reference rate which is practically published anytime between 1245 to 115 by Reserve Bank of India and there is a certain methodology which you can refer to the RBA website regarding that. Now RBA reference rate is something which we will consider here. Now assuming they are taking a position for one year. Uh, sitting today which is 30th October 2016-17. Assuming the RBA reference rate is 65.20. This is, let me write in bracket, this is RBI reference rate. And they are taking a one year position on that. But they don't want it to take a one year position. Rather they wanted to create a 12 different position. And they wanted to get it roll over. Perfectly fine. Assuming the notional in that is 500 million. Although for Apple this is a very small amount. But uh, we need to consider that. Here also we will assume that the notional. We keep the same notional. It is approximately 500 million dollars. Since they are doing for the one month. So the period which is they are doing is practically one month. To do the reference rate derivative strategy is one important thing. In fact two important thing which you have to understand very carefully. Number one. Uh, number one. This relevant party should have one foreign subsidiary in place. Here we are taking an example of Apple Singapore. Because Singapore is nothing but a financial hub. It's not a financial hub, rather it's a financial world in itself. It's a GTC, Global Treasury Center. You just name it and you will get it. This is what Singapore is all about. Secondly, on both the sides, the bank has to be same. It is next to impossible to do this trade if one side you have JP Morgan and one side you have Goldman Sachs. Or one side you have Citibank and one side you have HSBC. In that sense it's almost next to impossible to get this trade done. To get this trade done both side the party has to be has to be same. So what we what we would be doing is we are keeping that the bank here is Goldman Sachs India. And here we are assuming the bank is Goldman Sachs Sing Singapore. Now the moral of the story is that Apple would be first looking at what to do and what not to do. Which practically known as onshore offshore spread. Because Indian rupee there are almost 8 currencies in this world which are practically traded in the non-deliverable market. INR, CNY, Chinese Yuan, Philippines Peso, Pakistani Rupee, Malaysian Ringgit, Vietnamese Dong, TWD and, uh, and uh, TOI. Now these 8 currencies once tradable and one of them is the RBA ref, uh, Indian Rupee. Now let's take an example. Today is 30th September and we are shooting this video approximately 7 pm in the night. Now the point of contention is that I am shooting this video 7 p.m. at night on Monday on 30th of October 2017. For an Indian person the market has already been closed 2 hours ago. For me the market has already been closed 2 and a half hours ago because it is getting closed at 4.30. Corporates cannot trade after 4.30. So for me it has closed uh, 2 and a half hours ago. For, for, some, for an Indian it is being closed 2 hours ago. But if you open Thomson Reuters or Bloomberg and you type INR equals to, you will get the quote of the Indian rupee just now, which is getting traded at 7 pm IST 30th October 2017. Another thing, the one year premium in India is currently, which is an onshore premium, because we are uh, treating India as an onshore, is 278 to 280, which means 2 rupees 78 paisa for exporter and 2 rupee 80 paisa for importer. On the contrary, the offshore premium is approximately 252 to 256, which means 252 for an exporter and 256 for an importer. Now the practical problem, now the practical problem which we have in that is that here you have a better rate 
than here which means onshore have a better rate than offshore there are many people who are watching this video uh, tend to make assumption that the onshore would always be better than onshore you are wrong boss it's depend upon market condition sometimes onshore and offshore both have an equal rate and there are times when onshore and offshore have a wide difference like when i was that the corporate treasurer for excel there was a time when the difference between onshore and offshore was more than 1 rupee 1 rupee which is the offshore was giving a premium of 1 rupee in fact i, I if i do recall rightly 1 rupee and 18 16 paisa something was the difference 1 rupee 25 paisa was the difference between offshore onshore and offshore it means that if you would have sold it offshore you would have got 1 rupee 25 paisa more what you are getting in india so don't think that onshore is always greater than offshore it it depends upon the market condition and the spread between these two which is known as onshore offshore spread depends upon the the completely depends upon the market condition since sitting today which is 30th october 2017 the onshore is better than offshore so what apple would have done apple would have sold here and apple would have bought here but the biggest problem is that the catalyst between both has to be same else this trade will never work and we should not forget that this trade is actually a rolling trade for 12 months so what we would be doing we are going to ask our bank which is goldman sachs because both sides the bank has to be same we going to ask our bank goldman sachs to keep it to keep the reference rate same so the outright or which is always spot plus premium is equals to rba reference rate plus premium and here also the outright would be the same in singapore also outright would be the same so in india once we are selling the outright would be 65.20 plus 2 rupees 78 paisa which is 67.98 on the contrary if you look at here in singapore the outright would be 65.20 plus 2 rupees 52 paisa which is equals to 67.72 it means that there 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 is a spread which we refer as a delta of 27 paisa here now after one month because the actual contract they wanted to take for one year they should not take for one year due to some reason which is a revaluation reason because if you take for one year then the contract will mature after one year but 12 times revaluation would have happened and this would eat away your profits this is a little technical and this is a little something which we uh, which if you want you can you can call us we will explain explain you but uh, we, uh, we will we, we will explain you now after one month you take any rba reference rate because the non deliverable trades are always settled at rba reference rate since it's an apple and both sides we were having the same bank goldman sachs so you take any rba reference rate let's take it 65 You have here sold at 67.98 and RBA reference rate turns out to be 65. It means that you have got a gain of two rupee ninety-eight paisa. I am writing G here. And here, after one month, you have bought. Let me write here. This is sold position and this is bought position. Since you Bought at 67.72 and market was at 60. Not market RBA reference rate for other 65. So you would have a loss, which I'm writing minus two rupee and 72 paisa. The net gain in the books of Apple, once they will consolidate, would be equals to 27 paisa. And this is how the reference rate derivative strategies are possible. The only difference. in this trade would be this gain would be notional while this loss would be real and next month next month they are going to roll over the same 
they can increase this amount to, of 500 billion to 600 million or they can decrease this 600, 500 billion to 400 million. So basically this is not a cancellation, this is a rollover. And what is rollover? Cancellation plus the fresh booking. So once they roll over, the fresh RBA reference rate would kept, which is 65 plus we will look at the premium. But once we roll over, we will take that into cognizance that boss, uh, how is the onshore offshore spread going? Going. So here, once we originally did it, offshore was better than onshore. Once we are going to roll over, we need to see that whether this situation stands true or not. The problem, not the problem, the one accounting thing which you have to consider in this book, in, in, in this example is that, let me draw a, uh, a table here. I'm writing here legal entity. I'm writing reval. Reval stands for revaluation. And I am writing here the gain and loss. So Apple India would be facing a revaluation because the functional currency was INR, the contract is in dollar. Apple Singh would be facing revaluation. The functional currency was in Singapore dollar, the contract taken is uh, uh, functional currency was Singapore dollar, the contract taken is dollar. The gain and loss in Apple India is notional. On the other hand, it is real. But once we consolidate, that is in fact the balance sheet, it will impact the, the cash position. The, the, let me write uh, another column here, which is balance sheet. And let me write another, which is PNL. The cash position is not going to be hit here, while the cash position is going to be hit here. In case of PNL, it's going to be hit here and it's going to be hit here. So consolidation wise, the things would be wonderful. Companies like Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, Accenture, Sapient, Cognizant, Genpact, all these companies are doing such kind of strategies because they have a position in India and also across the globe. Let's take an example of an Amazon. What do you think? Amazon is whatever Amazon is selling, cup, pen, pencil, anything, whatever Amazon is selling, with due respect, the largest e-commerce company of this globe, is Amazon is producing everything or are they not importing? They are. And what do you think? Are they importing everything from India? Are they buying everything from India? Is Amazon India, who is selling a lot of things like big, 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 big Diwali sales and uh, yearly end sales and so many things which they are doing. Are they importing everything from India or they are importing from some other country and selling to India? They are. They are actually importing from some other, some other country and selling to India. How they are going to do that? Because the import is in some other currency while the functional currency of Amazon India is in, dollar, is in, is in, is in Indian rupee. On the other hand, on the other hand, the importing party, on the other hand, the contract signing party would be a different entity. Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, Google, you know, or Yahoo, Accenture, Sapien, Congress, and all these companies are doing such kind of strategies. Henceforth, they are known as reference rate derivative strategies. There are multiple things which we, which we can discuss, but uh, time does, uh, does not permit us. So you have our number if you want to discuss. Our website is www.treasuryconsulting.in. Our mobile is 9899242978. While my email is rahul.magan at the rate treasuryconsulting.in. Before winding up this video, I would like to tell you that our fixed income platform is just around the corner. And we are here to produce the world first integrated fixed income platform. No bank, no financial institution, no non-banking financial corporation, no entity have any property right on that fixed income platform. It is a product of Treasury Consulting LLP, which could have been developed in nine different phases. And the first phase would be happening in November 2017. We would like to thank you very much for giving us the support on the YouTube. We are turning out to be very big on the YouTube and you are watching the second largest YouTube channel. 
which is expecting at least 1000 videos by December 2018 and by the time we will wind up this year which is December 17 we would approximately be equals to 500 or 525 any number uh, between that we hereby thank you very much and there are multiple things which are on the way and don't forget our fixed income KPO is also around the corner 20 days to go thank you and have a wonderful time ahead